Number 10, Mount Pony. In 1969, the Federal Reserve built a 400 foot long bunker in Virginia with steel reinforced concrete over a foot thick. It is also covered by multiple feet of dirt and surrounded by fences and guard posts. The computers within the facility are the central node for all American electric money transfers. Until the 1990s, it also served as an extra government facility. For many years after its creation, it stored around $1 billion to rebuild the American economy if it ever fell to a nuclear attack. Currently, it stores the archive of movies from the Library of Congress, but because of it being hardened against nuclear attack, many people believe that the facility is sitting ready to be used in a time of need. The government tries to prevent any photos of the facility being placed online, as having the layout of the facility become public knowledge would remove any secrecy and advantage in the future. Only a few photos of it can be found online and they honestly look straight out of the back rooms. In our number 8 spot today we have Bikini Island. Bikini in the Marshall Islands was once inhabited by around 170 islanders until 1945 rolled around. The US president at the time, Harry Truman, ordered that the military continue to test nuclear weapons just in case they were needed in the future, since this was just shortly after the end of World War II. Unfortunately, Bikini was the place that was chosen to be the testing site since all planes and ships traveled on routes that weren't close to the area. The Residents of the island were asked to vacate, quote, for the good of mankind and to end all world wars, to which they of course obliged, under the impression that they would one day be able to move back. Test weapons were detonated on the reef itself, on the sea, in the air, and underwater, and this photo shows what was happening during just one of those tests, and it wasn't even the largest one. Although the former residents of Bikini were promised that they would one day be able to return home, the island still remains uninhabited because of the mass amounts of radiation that still exists there. Number 8, Tiananmen Square. While this image is not forbidden for the majority of us to look at, it is forbidden for around one and a half billion people. In 1989, student-led demonstrations in support of democracy took place in Tiananmen Square in China, the protesters attempting to stop military movement on the location. The government of China then declared martial law and they used their military alongside massive tanks to run down any protesters that tried to remain in the square. Because of the horrific nature of the event, the Chinese Chinese government has attempted to cover up the fact that the event in 1989 ever happened. Every year on the anniversary, they undertake a massive censorship campaign to ensure that nobody is talking about the event. Many people in the country have no idea that it ever even happened. But we have access to one of the most infamous images from the event, a protester standing in front of an advancing tank. While we can view it whenever we like, people in China are strictly punished if they ever even speak of what happened. Number 7, North Korea. Similarly to the censorship that takes place in China, North Korea often covers up the reality of what goes on in their country. But while they do hide it from their own citizens, they also hide it from any outsiders who may try to get a peek at how the country operates. Information going in and out of the country is strictly controlled to maintain their image. So if you ever want to visit, you'll probably have a pretty difficult time. Anyone who wants to enter the country must be accompanied by an escort, and you are only allowed to see pre-approved parts of the country, which are typically staged in order to look much better than the reality. While you may be allowed to photograph these areas, photographs of anything else will be destroyed and could land you in pretty serious trouble. The main thing they want to avoid anyone seeing is the major poverty in the country, with most families actually undertaking very hard labor jobs. There are also other rules like how you are not allowed to photograph a statue from behind. So if you do manage to get one of these pictures, you're very lucky and very brave. Number 6, Iranian Missile Launch One of the main things that governments all across the world like to cover up is their military power. They don't want you to know just how much power they're packing until it's already too late. In 2019, the Iranian government was conducting a missile test launch that went terribly wrong. It resulted in a large explosion that destroyed the whole facility they were operating out of. This occurred when tensions between Iran Iran and the rest of the world were at an all-time high. So Donald Trump, of course, tweeted out a satellite image of the 
testing site. While it may seem like a normal picture, the United States military became furious and wished that the photo had never been released. This is because of just how clear it is. They didn't want people knowing the extent of just how powerful their satellite cameras are. From the image alone, people were able to find out the location and name of the satellite that took the photo. The government attempted to redact the image and prevent any more people from seeing it, but it was on Twitter and it was already too late. Number 5. Area 51 Area 51, the infamous government base in Nevada, was not even publicly confirmed by the government to exist until 2013. Honestly, way more recently than I thought it was. They stated that it was a military testing site, but a majority of the public believe that it's home to aliens and all evidence thereof. Because of the maintained secrecy surrounding the base, you are not allowed to fly in their airspace, and any pictures of the facility are pretty strictly prohibited. However, in 2020, one pilot managed to lie their way into getting the most up close and clear footage of the facility like ever. In 2020, the private pilot named Gabriel managed to gain access to restricted airspace by telling them he just wanted to continue his quick route to the airport, them not knowing he was equipped with his GoPro to capture footage of the secret facility. He states how he didn't see any activity around the base, but we are fortunate enough to have the images that show even more of the base's layout, while the government is probably not too happy about the fact that this footage even exists. Number 4. Ayi Arnagari It is a military base in Greece that they seem fully determined to cover up and prevent anyone from knowing anything about it. While you can use Google Earth to see an aerial image of just about anywhere on the planet, there are a few areas that are blurred from your view, and this military base is one of them. It's located in central Athens, and while you can see the building that surrounds it, the full complex is completely pixelated and blurred out. Basically, all images and information about the facility is kept under wraps by the government. Some people believe that it's a military training facility for new recruits, but could also be their military command headquarters. Photos from ground level or of anyone entering or exiting the facility are strictly prohibited. Number 3. Pine Gap The United States government has multiple facilities that are used for collecting and storing secret intelligence. The Pentagon is probably the most well known one. However, how publicly known the Pentagon is could be on purpose to distract from the other intelligence facilities that they're trying to hide from the public. One lesser known one is the Pine Gap Surveillance Facility that is located in Australia, a crucial base for the United States surveillance of Asia. Because of its importance, they do everything they can to prevent any images of the base making it into public hands. This is because they don't want any information of its layout, operations, or abilities to be known by enemy states and the people that they are collecting information on. Unfortunately for them, it is still possible for the public to actually get pretty close to it, so there are a few images that can be found of the outside. Number 2. X-37 Space Plane The United States military is constantly testing and experimenting with new things, and one of the main things that they have tried to improve in the past is military air travel. Obviously, they wouldn't want any information about these new things to get leaked, with the fear it may end up in enemy hands. One of their most secretive designs ever was the X-37 space plane, and it landed at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, the government attempting to prevent any images of this event being leaked. It's an autonomously piloted space plane and was landing there after completing a two-year mission in orbit, two of them apparently being in service. While we do have pictures of what it looks like, its purpose and what technology and capabilities it has remains under wraps. Because of how secretive the government has been with this potential new spy plane, the images that we do have of it are pretty rare, and they're not too happy about the fact that we have them. Number 1. Leaked Military Hardware The United States government aren't the only ones who have had leaks of experimental military equipment. The Chinese military also had a similar situation occur, except they accidentally leaked it all on their own. In their magazine titled Modern Ships, they included an image of the new H6N bomber. While it was purposeful to show off the ship, they didn't intend to show off the new design of the large projectile attached to the bottom of it, experts believing it was built to help with China's territory disputes. As soon as they realized what they'd done, the publishers retracted the image, but it was too late and it was already out there. So they tried to claim it was a computer generated error, but more pictures leaked online of the actual jet in operation, matching the image in the magazine. The images hit the internet and they lost all hopes of trying to cover it up. 
up. Kicking off the list at number 10, Victorian memorials. I'm a sucker for dark history, and when it comes to the Victorian era, there is nothing more grim, honestly. Deadly dresses, the great stink, rats everywhere, it's a dangerous time. The life expectancy was of course a lot shorter than it is today. So you really had to hold on to those you loved, right? But this is a time where we don't have iPhones, we don't have Facebook just randomly showing you memories. Remember this? Like, no, stop. So how do you remember a loved one after they've passed away? Well, Victorian morning jewelry, that's how. In the 1750s, it would be normal to carry with you a gold locket with hair from your past lover. It's, yeah, a little locket of hair. How cool is that? Creepy? A little bit creepy. It was often braided or neatly folded. It wasn't just a ball of hair stuffed in a locket. Although it wasn't not that either, right? It was pretty gross. During Queen Victoria's reign, she would often wear morning jewelry. She made the locket of hair cool, dare I say. She made it popular. After the death of Albert, she went into a horror depression, she wore morning clothes for decades and decades afterwards. That's why you see the Victorian era and everyone's wearing black, everyone looks all grim. It's because they just followed suit, they just wore what the queen was wearing. Bracelets, necklaces, rings, the enamel of the rings also depends on the type of death that came prior, or the type of mourning that you're doing. White enamel represented death of an unmarried woman, pearls represented tears, turquoise meant that you were thinking of them on that day, and eventually pendants with hair became a next step. I'm a fan of mourning jewelry, I like that idea. Idea. I wish I knew this sooner. I wish I knew this 10 years ago. I'd be like, oh, my eyebrow piercing? Yeah, it's to mourn my mother. That's why I got it. Sad and rad. Boink. There you go. Number nine, made of harlech. While secret government facilities are one thing, it can be hard to believe that it's illegal to photograph something that you might just stumble upon on an afternoon walk. A plane that was nicknamed the Maid of Harleck crashed off the coast of Wales back in September of 1942. The pilot lost control during a training exercise and the plane crashed, though the pilot did walk away in pretty good shape. The plane is under around 2 meters of water and only becomes visible when the tide conditions are just right. The wreckage has never moved moved in all this time, and while its actual location is kept under wraps, it is in a public area that we assume anybody can access. However, you may find yourself in some legal trouble if you saw it and try to take a photo of it. The Protection of Military Remains Act prevents the location of any military remains being publicly shared, so any photos of the plane that give away its location are quickly removed from the internet and are not allowed to be seen. Number 8. Adhesive Bras Back in 1949, Life magazine released an article that caught everybody's attention, obviously. May 16th, 1948, the article read, For 5,000 years, clothes have been draped, tied, buttoned, pinned, and buckled on the human form. This year, for the first time in history, they will be glued on. Bam. How? How did they do it? They changed the game. Could this be? We're gluing on shoes and pants now? Let's do it. Inventor Charles L. Langs changed the game, or so we thought, in 1949. He made bra cups that would stick onto you with adhesive. So a ring of, just a ring of glue. There you go. This special glue, this adhesive, was promised to leave behind no residue and it was also supposed to be painless. Yet at the same time, it was supposed to stay glued on, even if you were to jump into a pool from 10 feet high. How? What's, that's, that was the sell, no way. Well, Langs ended up selling the company to Textron because it didn't work, the product ultimately failed, because the adhesive needed to be applied every single time you wore said cups. Nobody wants to do that. We're not putting on toothpaste on our bras every morning and sticking them on. And again, they barely even worked, so yeah, none of these, thank you, I'm good. Glue on pants, that'd be sick. Till then, we're not trying that. Number seven, German mascots. German history is of course dark. So dark that YouTube won't even allow us to say certain words about certain people from that time. But we do our best. We like to rhyme, that's how we trick them. For today's list, I thought we'd take a look at Germany's fad of taking photos with polar bear mascots. Yeah, apparently that was a thing. Here in Toronto, we like to pose up next to the raptor or Jay, the blue Jay, it's always fun. Dap them up, it's always a good time. These photos are part of the teddy bear collection. They span from the First World War to the early 70s. The German bear mascot remained throughout history, but the company surrounding the polar bear mascot of course changed drastically throughout the years, and it's really grim to look at. You see photos of a smiling mascot next to Yahtzee soldiers, and then the next page you see the same German mascot, but 40 years ago, you know what I mean? 
it's odd. You're like, ugh. It's like seeing the Blue Jay guy back in the 1800s. You're like, what were you doing? Many believe this craze began after two polar bears arrived at the Berlin Zoo back in the 1920s. That's where it all kicked off. Because of course, it was a major tourist attraction. But these suits, we can't forget, were first worn, of course, by natives for ritual practices, specifically the native people of Pacific Northwest. Romania as well, dancers would wear real bear skins as part of a pre-Christian tradition. It was meant to drive away the forces of evil or just pose up next to Yahtzee soldiers. That's where we're at recently. Number six, reindeer games. June 1941, the Germans were attacking the Soviet Union and it was one of the biggest attacks, of course, in history. Britain and US had to send weapons, supplies, anything really just to keep them afloat, just to keep them in the fight. Now they sent these supplies through the Arctic Circle, that was the only route, but of course it was littered with U-boats. Thankfully, the British HMS Trident was there to watch the waters and in turn the Soviets were able to fight on. So as a gift, as a thank you, the Soviets sent the captain of the Trident, the World War II submarine, a live reindeer. Yep, for the submarine, you know, just a reindeer for the sub. Doesn't make any sense, right? I agree. The British had to accept because it was ill-mannered if they didn't, so they had to keep a six foot tall, real life reindeer on a sub. Her name was Pollyanna. They brought her on board through a torpedo tube. Imagine being in battle and then having to deal with this after. You're like, guy. We don't need this right now, please. She was a crew member for six weeks. Six weeks, imagine the smell. And she slept better than most. She shared a room in the captain's quarters. Horrible. Finally, the Trident returned home to Britain and our leading lady was donated immediately to the Regent Park Zoo. Yeah, they didn't keep her on the sub. Weird, right? Number five, Alfred Hitchcock and the MGM Lion. We're on part three now, so things are gonna get a little more bizarre. I'll veer more into the weird, gladly. Like this photo, for example, from 1958, taken by Clarence Sinclair Bull. The photo appears to be, well, it doesn't appear to be, it's Alfred Hitchcock serving tea to Leo the Lion. The famous MGM Lion, that's him. That's the guy, I want an autograph right now. He loves suspense and tea, who would have thought? North by Northwest was the only film Hitchcock did with MGM, and there's actually a rumor that he directed The Lion's Roar for the MGM intro. But that, of course, is nonsense, because you can't direct a lion. Yeah, just a little more lion-like. Awesome, thanks, Leo. Let's take lunch. We're killing it. No way, this, that didn't happen. There have been seven MGM lions in total, but Leo was known to be the most friendly. He's still on the logo today. He's an OG. He's made it. But again, back in the 1950s, it's hard to say what it really was like on set. You know, like it's still a lion and it's the 50s. I don't think we have a lot of laws and stuff. It was probably a really rough time for Leo. Number four, the hobble skirt. Just from this 1910 headline alone, I'm glad we don't have hobble skirts anymore. Although maybe they might, they might make a comeback, we'll see. The headline reads, the hobble skirt is the latest freak in women's fashions. Skirts that are so tight around the ankle that locomotion is seriously impeded and speed is impossible. What a pitch. Doesn't that sound like a bad time already? Sounds like you're gonna be late for everything, honestly. French designer Paul Poirier made these to free the bust whilst also shackling the legs. To keep it a little, you know, keep it classy. You know, what's, what's more classy than shuffling around all day long and being late? Nothing, love the practicality on this one. Thanks, Paul. So despite how ridiculous and unsafe the hobble skirt looks and acts, only the wealthy could afford such a thing. Damn it, we're missing out. We'll get up next time. Guess I'll just stick with my jeans like a fool. Middle and lower class women wore skirts with slits or buttons. They could actually walk around. Imagine that, eh? What a weird, what a weird concept. Hobble skirts luckily didn't last, but every now and then I sent the comeback, you know? With the Kardashians, I'm like, eh, that's close. That's close to a hobble skirt. Locomotion is seriously impeded. What a sell. Number three, Gloria Steinem. Back in 1963, the Playboy Club in New York City was one of Hugh Hefner's greatest accomplishments at the time, of course. The club was the talk of the town until Gloria Steinem came along. See, Gloria was a feminist writer. She created Miss Magazine back in 1972, but her career began much earlier around the 60s. See, she got a job as one of these Playboy bunnies and worked at the club undercover secretly taking notes on how this keyholder's only establishment was actually operating, you know, behind the pages. The staff were these 
these young women, the bunnies of course, they had to wear black bodysuits, the puffy white tails, the whole getup. And at age 28, Gloria worked undercover for three weeks. The piece she released after, appropriately titled A Bunny's Tail, got so much attention that it kickstarted her freelance career. It made her a feminist icon to this day. This photo of Gloria undercover shows you the comfortable work outfits that she had to endure. That's horrible. It's all dark too. You can't even see what's going on. People are smoking inside. It's like peaky blinders. It's horrible. I don't think she had non-slips on. Know what I mean? In a collection of her writings, Gloria reflects on the undercover piece, saying how it has now outlived all the Playboy clubs, both here and abroad. That was before Hefner passed away in 2017. I'm sure she didn't mean outlive literally by this statement. But she also did, you know? Number two, Stalin Photoshop. Deep fakes are getting out of control. It's insane. Modern technology is really making it hard to tell what's real and what's not. I'm falling for a lot of things online lately. I'm starting to feel like an old man, I'm not gonna lie. Photoshop is also an essential now for any project. It's probably why you clicked this video. You saw the thumb and you're like, mm, what's this? Photoshop. Back in 1939, a photo of Stalin was published and he looks great. Guy looks amazing, some would say too good. He was touching up photos as far back as 1939 to make himself look more powerful, more healthy. But even if you got a photo with him, there's a chance you would be digitally removed later on. Like Nikolai Yetsov. Yeah, the leader of the NKBD, he was in a photo with Stalin, but around 1937, Nikolai was responsible for orders that had over one million people arrested. And to make matters worse, half of them were executed for crimes against the state. So it wasn't ideal, of course, to be in a photo with Nikolai. He was denounced, imprisoned, and died in 1940, so Stalin had him erased and replaced digitally in that photo. This man was ahead of his time. Even today, we're replacing actors in movies with different actors, and you wouldn't even know it. And finally, number one, Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky. Ah, uh, yes, we all remember hearing about this at one point, even if you wanted to or not. Bill Clinton talking about not having relations with that woman. Yeah, back when we had to download music on LimeWire, this would just pop up out of nowhere and blow your eardrums out. This was a huge scandal. This was that scandal. It was 1998. Clinton White House intern Monica Lewinsky was 22 years old and they had a relation from 1995 to 1997. Lewinsky said she hooked up with Bill nine different times at the White House. Of course, you have to count. You're at the White House, obviously, you're keeping note. And apparently, according to her schedule, Hillary Clinton was also at the White House for at least seven of those days. Hey, big yikes. Whenever I see this photo, I wish I was alive to see this unfold in real time. I mean, I was alive, but I was, you know, you know what I mean. Number 10, Go Pills. Introducing Go Pills, the pill that keeps you up for 40 hours straight. What could possibly go wrong? When the government tried creating these new pills, the right idea was in mind or so we think. Overnight workers, military, maybe you need to cram three days of studying in in one night. You name it. The US Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, was supposed to have your back. What happened? The Air Force has around 100 fatal crashes on record because of fatigued pilots. So US military was actively trying to create a solution for these physically demanding jobs. The closest that we have now to these go pills are something called modafinil, which is a narcotic approved by the Air Force to combat said fatigue, but it's not public yet. Of course, obviously. Do you think these government go pills will ever make it to the public? I mean, I think coffee makes people crazy enough in the mornings. I'm all set personally. I'm on like coffee number four. I'm jazzed up right now. Number nine, Detroit Ice Fountain. Located on Washington Boulevard, the Detroit Ice Fountain was quite the hazard. A spectacle, but a hazard nonetheless. Back in the early 1900s, a fountain was the talk of the town during colder months. Believe it or not, it's how bored people were, I guess. The water jet would run all year long, so in turn this fountain would freeze and pile up and then freeze and pile up again and again. Eventually this thing reached up to 60 feet tall, made of pure ice right on Washington Boulevard. This was so dangerous, yeah, shifting ice, dangling 60 feet above your head on the way to work. Literally tons of ice cracking above your head. The tradition has now moved to Belle Island, thankfully, so now you can safely observe said ice trees. Just, you know, maybe not in the middle of the street anymore. Number eight, Project Ice Worm. Ooh, speaking of cold, here we go. Back in the 1960s, under the Greenland ice sheet, the US Army started to build a mobile nuclear missile launch site, okay? It was codenamed Project Ice Worm. It's a pretty fun name because it's cold and underground. 
We get it, right? Nice. The idea was that they would build the station close enough so that they could hit targets within the Soviet Union, all secretly, right? That was the whole idea. This project was called Project Iceworm, but there was another project called Camp Century that had to be done first. This is the top secret, sketchy stuff. Can't just hit the road with a few shovels, you gotta make sure it's livable first. Camp Century was a network of underground tunnels and places for workers to hang out, like a kitchen, a hall, supply rooms, communication center, all stuff like that. It was a supply camp. You know, whatever you imagine, it was that. There was also a nuclear power plant. That's the most important part to keep everything active, right? This was kept from the Danish government for seven years. A secret nuclear power plant for seven years. Yeah, we don't like those. But in 1966, the project was canceled because of shifting ice. Or at least that's what they say. No, it's definitely shifting ice. The whole place is melted by now. Number seven, leaked voters. Back in December 2015, personal information from 191 million voters was leaked to the public online happened very fast. This feels like yesterday. I remember this happening online. I was actually quite worried about it. Researcher Chris Vickery found this data while conducting a security investigation. See, Forbes had described Vickery as, well, dare I say, a good hacker, for lack of a better word. They're called white hat hackers. They find weak spots in security without sabotaging or exploiting them. You know, they're not villains. They're just like, oh, Check this file, gotcha. They're nice, that's key, we need that. That's the difference. 79% of those eligible to vote were the victims in this leak. All their names, addresses, birth date, phone numbers, emails, even photos, you name it. Things you don't want people knowing, let alone third parties online. It's now out there. We're still unsure who was behind this entire leak, so that's comforting to go to sleep to, knowing. CSO Online and databreaches.net suggest that the information more than likely came from a software provider called Nation Builder. But CEO Jim Gilliam announced that that was not the case and they did not create the database. He said, nope, false. Although he conceded that it is still possible that some of the information that it contains may have come from data that they make available for free to campaigns. So a third party took what they could and really ran with it. It wasn't them, it was just their weak security. Nice, we love that. Just my photo, just in someone's Google Doc. I'm like, awesome. I don't want anything out there. I don't want my Google search history out there. That sounds suspicious. Number six, the Space Cube. In honor of Jordan Peele's new space movie coming out called Nope, we have to include some alien cover-ups in this government list. Not too long ago, the spinning cube-looking drone hopefully drone, was spotted over Missouri, and then only a couple hours later, it was seen again 700 miles away. That's a pretty far distance, that's a fast travel time. What's your secret? 44-year-old Matthew Jandeka was minding his own business, hanging out on the porch, when this caught his attention. It was a sunny day, so the light reflected off the cube and it caught his eye. But then a day later, another guy, 30-year-old Justin Johnson, he saw the same exact thing in the sky. He saw it while he was driving home. The light and the reflection, same thing, caught his eye. At first, I thought maybe it was a balloon, but the movements were odd, he said. Well, it sounds like whatever this thing is, military aircraft, drone, whatever the case, it's pretty fast. Maybe they're filming Top Gun 3, who knows? No spoilers. Number five, Surtsey Island. Some islands are forbidden, like Heard Island. They're home to animals and wildlife that the government refuses to let humans be part of, which is sketchy in its own way. A lot of Jurassic Park vibes over there. But when it comes to Surtsey Island near Iceland, again, always Iceland, hiding secret government projects, well, Surtsey Island is a brand new island. We love it. Literally, this island formed from a volcanic eruption back in 1963, so scientists are using this fresh face of Earth to study what it looks like to not have humans in the picture for a change. Yeah, we have seed vaults, a forbidden island. These projects make people uneasy. Hence why the government tries to keep them low key. That is until I come out and then loudly announce it and then tell you to hit that like button. Awesome. Number four, WikiLeaks Warlog. Companies have to live somewhere, right? We're a film studio in Toronto, we're a place we're not just a bunker, right? We're like an establishment, there's windows, we have a fridge, lots of coffee, we're okay. But where do places like WikiLeaks work? It's probably a sketchy establishment. It's probably nothing like Google, you know what I'm saying? Not a lot of beanbag chairs going on at WikiLeaks. Probably just one chair that everyone shares. Just one guy, it's literally just one guy. Today, it's a facility owned by Swedish internet provider Banhoff. This is where they keep servers for WikiLeaks. Julian Assange was the front runner for this whole operation, so. Literally, like I said, it was one guy. His hard drive is stored in this bunker behind a two foot steel door accompanied by numerous backup generators. So you're not getting in, pal. In October 2010, WikiLeaks actually published Army Field Reports from 2004. It's now one of the biggest leaks in US history. This report confirmed that there were over 66,000 civilian deaths in the Iraqi war logs out of the 109,000 in total. This leak also suggested that some American troops were classifying civilians as enemies in their statistics. Yeah, which is not great. That's, that's a borderline 
That's a big leak. These numbers were from 2004 to 2009 alone. Yeah, it's hard stuff. Number three, military weapons. Getting into the alien stuff, here we go. Psychoelectronic weapons. Yeah, apparently we're in a DC comic now. We have ice darts, ice rays, what's going on here? The first time Curtis Waltman heard of these military psychoelectronic weapons was when he received documents via Yahoo. Of all the places to get documents, you're like, oh. This is 10 years old. Originally, he had filed a Freedom of Information Act request to Washington State Fusion Center. He was trying to find out more on the clashes between Antifa and the far right. But instead, he got a response and it was all about experimental weapons. He's like, this is not what I asked for. What is this? Open. The guy gets a zip file back in return and it's called EM Effects on Human Body. Uh, how do you not open that, right? And that's exactly what he did. He opened this file because, of course, and in it he saw diagrams on these weapons and the effects that they have on people. Muscle quaking, body pain, just shivering, just your body shuts down, it's horrible. One of the effects allowed users to control their dreams, so it's not all bad, it's just kind of not right, unethical. This was clearly sent by a mistake. Nobody should ever know about any of these weapons, these super dream weapons. I don't even know what's going on there. The only emails I get are from student loans. Those ones are not a mistake. Those ones I, I will keep deleting. Number two, inner armor. Not to be confused with your inner ninja. It's also pretty mighty. We've all wanted to be a superhero at some point. Okay, I'm always late. I would love super speed any day. That'd be great. Well, DARPA's inner armor project almost made a dream come true. It was the Pentagon's way of creating super soldiers. Yeah, like Iron Man. They were literally working on this. Scientists use animals as a reference for these new abilities, literally like from a Marvel movie. They're studying the DNA of the stellar sea lion because it can reduce blood flow away from organs if need be in order to reduce oxygen demand. So now we're studying that to try and make I don't know, people like Atlanteans? Where are we going here? That would be sweet, just Aquaman with a tactical vest and a spear. Okay, that's, sure. Dr. Michael Callahan, who was in charge of running the operation, he says the goal was to make soldiers kill-proof against disease, chemical weapons, radioactive weapons, harsh weather conditions, you name it, all that good stuff. Pretty much invincible. Now, this was back in 2007, and of course in 2014, Barack Obama announced that the United States was still building Iron Man, so maybe they're close. Maybe they haven't done it yet, who knows. Honestly, I'm seeing videos every day of like these guys on hoverboards whipping down New York. We're so close to the Green Goblin in real life. We're f or like the water pier guy, he like uses the water to float. That's like two villains. It's two villains right there in real life. And finally, number one, MK Ultra. We have to finish with a mind control project. It's the only way, of course. MK Ultra was a secret CIA project that lasted from 1953 to 1973. It's a long time. They ran hundreds of experiments to US citizens. They gave them illicit substances and other narcotics, just horrible stuff, all in attempts to crack mind control, or as they call it, information gathering. Mind control. It's definitely mind control. In the 50s and 60s, around the Cold War, the United States believed that the Soviets, Chinese, and or North Korean agents were all using mind control in the war. I mean, how else could you explain brainwashed prisoners of war in Korea, right? Nothing to do with what they're doing to them. Sure. The program had subjects take L D, hallucinogens, paralytics, electric shock therapy, horrible stuff, just being put through the absolute worst, all in places like universities or hospitals or even prisons, right? You have no idea this stuff's happening. The happenings of these projects weren't fully known to the public until years after it ended. But the agency destroyed most MK documents back in 1973 when the whistle was blown. So we think we know, but in reality, we only know little to what happened during MK Ultra. All right, starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the reflecting pool. This is one of the creepiest or most chilling images ever taken. It depicts a young girl in a graveyard who is looking down at her reflection in a pond. Okay, maybe a little eerie, but not exactly chilling. What really makes this photo what it is, however, is that there are seemingly two different reflections looking back up at the little girl. No one knows who this girl is, where she is, or when this photo was taken, but it is estimated to have come from somewhere around the early 1900s. This photo was analyzed, and it has been said that it is unaltered or edited. Who knows how this photo was possible? Maybe there was some sort of invisible entity standing beside her that we could only see the reflection of. Like a reverse vampire or something. Number 9. The heart attack gun. Sounds like a pretty calm weapon right there. The CIA had this weapon and it was more of a dart gun than anything, but you know, heart attack gun sounds pretty on the nose for this list. It shot a frozen dart filled with a specific toxin that, you guessed it, gave you a heart attack. 
pretty James Bond, right? It was frozen so that the dart would ideally melt away after it's done its damage. You know, destroying all the evidence, right? It's like some icicle killer stuff right there. That's some that's some next level. There we go. Took me 17 <laughs> seconds to remember what an icicle was called. I was like, what are those long, drippy, frozen things? The icicles. The CIA was really into poisons during the Cold War and apparently darts. Match made in heaven. The public caught wind of all this thanks to Senator Frank Church, and when Congress decided to look into where these tax dollars were going, they found a plethora of illegal methods used by not only the CIA, but also the NSA and the FBI and the IRS. A lot of letters coming in, a lot of, a lot of sketchy letters. Frozen darts, that's insane. That's a confusing way to go out. You'd have no idea what happened. You'd be like, ugh, burr. Ow. Like, it'll be that fast. That's crazy. In our number eight spot today, we have this huge grasshopper. This photo is allegedly undoctored, or at least that's what people once believed. But as it turns out, this photo actually comes from a line of joke postcards. Thank God. Apparently, it was a hilarious hit back in the day to create postcards depicting a super ungodly large kind of grasshopper. Like the kind that would make me line up first for a trip to Mars if I saw one hopping around here on Earth. Or should I say, leaping. Like for a second, just imagine. With how high regular tiny grasshoppers can jump, this thing would be jumping into the clouds for sure. Also, like, what would it eat? No thank you to large bugs, especially ones that can jump. I'm just so glad that this one turned out to be fake. Even though it's fake, I wish this was still one that they withheld from the public. And our number seven spot today, we have these prohibition barrels. The prohibition was the outlaw of the consumption of alcohol, which was done with a ban being placed on the production, importation, transportation, and sale of alcohol by the US government from 1920 to 1933. This ban certainly did not stop people from producing or consuming alcohol. It was just done in sneakier ways. The black market for alcohol was booming as people began to drink redistilled industrial alcohol instead. This photo shows how big the black market industry for alcohol was as it shows a massive stack of liquor barrels that were collected by the authorities in 1924 about to be set ablaze. The people look so tiny standing next to this insane amount of alcohol. While the pro Prohibition is generally regarded as a failure, the biggest failure it caused was the unintended organized crime it put into life in America. In our number six spot today, we have this neighborhood nuclear test. This photo shows a mother and her young son looking out the window and witnessing a nuclear test explosion from the comfort of their own home in 1953. Like. What? Imagine seeing that from your window now in 2021. People would be going wild. Of course, any kind of nuclear test should be done as far away from where people live as possible. I know it's not like the test was being done in their front yard or anything, but still, I certainly wouldn't be comfortable with them testing a nuclear bomb anywhere near the place I live. This photo was of course taken before the effects of nuclear radiation from these kind of explosions were publicly understood. Actually, people have suggested that the public knowledge of these kinds of side effects were suppressed during this time in order to avoid controversy about them testing these kinds of weapons in your neighborhood. While that would of course be something insane to witness firsthand, thankfully the now widely known health risks associated with this sort of thing has caused this to not be a common occurrence. In our number five spot today, we have the Boston Marathon. This photo comes to us from 1967 and it depicts the struggles that Catherine Switzer went through in order to be the first female to finish the Boston Marathon. This photo shows race organizers as well as other participants participants trying to stop her from running the marathon that she trained for and was more than capable of completing. She has written a book that explains in great detail all the things she went through that day and how the critiques and opinions about a woman running the race started even before she had registered to run. People in our history like Catherine are incredibly important as well as photos like these because they show when people were literally trying to drag her down, she just kept on running. In our number four spot today, we have a traffic jam. On Sunday, September 3rd, 1967, Sweden changed from driving on the left-hand side of the road to driving on the right-hand side of the road. Why? Well, I'm not exactly sure considering people downvoted the idea before it was implemented and it cost a ton of money to make the switch. Not to mention it's also super confusing for basically everyone and when we're talking about driving, the simpler the better. Traffic lights had to be reversed, road signs changed, intersections redesigned, lines on the roads repainted, buses modified, and bus stops moved. What happened when the change was implemented? Well, that's what this photo will show you. Absolute chaos. However, after the initial shock, things did start to get better as because drivers were much more cautious in the time following the switch, the number of traffic accidents actually dropped for a little while before inevitably rising again. Was the switch worth it? Well, no one is sure about that, but what are they going to do? 
change it back. In our number three spot today, we have the three Jacksons. On August 21st, 1934, three fearless acrobats known as the three Jacksons, Charlie Smith, Jewel Waddock, and Jimmy Kerrigan all performed a routine on the edge of the Empire State Building, which is when this photo was captured. It is said that these three toured as an acrobatic trio, and this stunt the photo captured was done at 1,245 feet. According to officials from the Empire State Building, it is said that this was the first time the stunt was attempted, and to this day, it has never been done again, which makes a lot of sense. While this photo is absolutely incredible and is such a testament not only to the trust they shared, but also their abilities as acrobats, I don't know who in their right mind would try to recreate this. We already have one, and I think we can just all be happy with that. In our number two spot today, we have the man who fell from space. Vladimir Komarov was a cosmonaut, Soviet test pilot, and aerospace engineer. He was one of the most highly experienced and qualified people, which is exactly why he was chosen for some of the very first space missions. He became the first Soviet cosmonaut to fly into space twice. Unfortunately, however, on one of these missions, things went seriously awry. A parachute failure caused his capsule to crash into the ground after re-entry on the 24th of April in 1967. He literally fell from space, and regardless of if you know anything about space and re-entry, that would have been absolutely terrifying and awful. He of course didn't make it, but the entire process left his remains almost unrecognizable. This photo shows his colleagues looking onto his remains before he was laid to rest. The contributions of people like Vladimir have allowed us to go further into space and understand more than we ever could have imagined. In our number one spot today, we have the gadget. This photo shows the first ever atomic bomb and it comes to us from 1945. Called the gadget, this bomb was an implosion plutonium device that was detonated in the Trinity test in 1945. This photo shows someone sitting next to it, so casually, like it's a PB&J sandwich and not this world changing device. The Trinity test was the very first time a nuclear weapon was detonated and the gadget was actually the same design as the bomb that was later detonated over Nagasaki, Japan on August 9th, 1945. There's such an eerie nature about this photo and the seemingly casual behavior of the man next to it. Did he know what this was about to unleash? Perhaps, but maybe not. Kicking off the list at number 10, William Thomas Dead. Born in 1849, William Thomas Stead was the son of Congregationalist minister, and at the age of 22, he was appointed as editor of the Northern Echo, a regional newspaper in Darlington. This British medium, Richard Borsonal, featured a photo of W.T. Stead and a spirit. Or a demon. One of the two, both pretty terrifying. While William was investigating a spiritual case, he took this photo with what's supposed to be the spirit of Pete Botha. Now, the reason many believe that maybe the spirit is evil is that Stead later on died in the Titanic. He boarded the ship to take part in a peace congress at Carnegie Hall, and survivors mentioned William Thomas Stead a few times. Apparently, at dinner, he was chatting his way throughout the entire 11 course meal, recounting exciting, spooky times in his life, even mentioning a cursed mummy that he encountered at the British Museum once. That's a little odd for table talk. He even gave his life jacket to another passenger that night too. Stead would often claim that he would one day pass due to hanging or to drowning. And right before he was to be awarded with the Nobel Peace Prize, he passed away due to the latter. Was he cursed? I believe so, to be honest with you. What do you guys think? Number nine, the demonic boy photograph. It doesn't matter where or when, but odds are you've probably seen this photo at some point. All those late nights when you're scrolling through Reddit, you've probably seen this at some point. I know I have, and every time I see it, I'm kind of like, mm, it looks pretty real, it's pretty haunting. You know when you see a photo, sometimes you get bad vibes, like it registers in your brain as something scary and real. Like you want to find something that looks fake about the photo, but it's tough. This photo was taken inside the Amityville house in 1976. It appears to be a young boy or ghost, spirit, demon, whatever, with glowing white eyes. It was taken with automatic cameras equipped with infrared. And it makes it even creepier that the boy looks like he's peeking around the corner. Like he knew something was coming almost, he didn't want to get caught. That's the creepiest part here. A photographer named Gene Campbell took it, and Gene was working with paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren at the time. Yeah, the famous duo now rocking the big screen Conjuring universe. This was a real thing. They were on this case in real life. This photo was revealed three years after it was taken, and it was revealed on the Merv Griffin show. Imagine seeing this on a show, like Jimmy Kimmel whips this out. It's like, hey, we're gonna play Plinko. Check out this demon. 
Many believe this is the ghost of John DeFeo, one of the boys who lived there prior during the 1974 event. Now we're still trying to cover this one, but what do you guys think? Is this an elaborate hoax? Is this a young boy? Or is this one of the many demons that was said to haunt the house? Sound off down below. No. In our 8th spot, we have the woman in a nightgown. On October 15th of 2015, a forum on TexasBowHunter.com encouraged people to post their spookiest trail cam pics. And a user named Chu definitely won this. He posted a photo of what appears to be a ghostly woman in a nightgown bending over. According to Chu, this photo was taken on his ranch. So his plot of land came with a cemetery where back in the day slaves were buried. So could this be one of the slaves murdered there? The scariest part is that days prior he found bare human footprints in the area. He was sketched out because the area is pretty far away from roads or other houses. And then a little while later his camera picked up this image. To this day they don't know who this woman is or why she was on his land. Or if she's even living. Number 7. Backseat Driver this photo is from 1959. Okay, it was taken by a lady named Mabel Chinnery. And the photo, at first glance, is just a classic 60s shot of a man in a car. That man was Mabel's husband. Now, the man in the back seat, however, that back left seat, we have no idea who that was. Her husband apparently was the only guy in the car at the time. And also, that's a pretty tough angle. If you wanted to recreate this photo with your friends after work, like, try this. This is a really hard shot, even with phones now. It would be hard back in the day. It's like he's appearing to us through the seat almost with that angle. So either this is a lie, which happens often, people can lie, and a man was sitting in the back left seat, or like Mabel thinks, maybe this is her dead mother-in-law. Now, if she had said father-in-law, I think maybe it was his spirit, but this for sure looks like an older gentleman with a collar or something. Kind of looks like, uh, dare I say it, the devil. I don't know, I read a lot of comic books. Number six, Coventry Society Demon. You may be thinking, some of these may not be demons, Taylor. Maybe they're just nice spirits who stuck around after they passed. Yeah, while it's nice to believe that, photos like this convince me otherwise. This is from the Coventry Freeman Society, and it shows everybody at this event dressed to the nines. But when you look at the top left corner over here, you see a hooded figure. Somebody that clearly doesn't belong with the vibe in this room at this event. Nobody else was seen also at any point at that night wearing a hood like this. So of course many believe it was a dark part of the afterlife photobombing this event. Honestly, I totally believe that. This is a weird one. The hood, it's... I, maybe I've been watching Harry Potter lately. I don't know. Maybe it's a Dementor. We actually don't know. Number five. The ghost pilot. Oh, this one gives me the creeps. I'm hoping it's just a friendly ghost. I included it, it's kind of nice, but you never really know, honestly. This one, I did some research, it's creepy. Any sort of spirit I don't welcome. Yeah, I don't gamble on the afterlife. I'm actually all set. The ghost pilot is a photograph that shows a spirit from 1987. A woman named Mrs. Sayer was visiting an airfield in England, so of course, she did the classic tourist thing and got a photo in the cockpit. We all do it at some point, but do you ever think of who may have died in that exact spot before? After the age of 10 years, Old, I was like, you know what? I understand ghosts. I'm not gonna sit in that tank. I'm good, thanks. People swear the Titanic was a cursed ship and that spirits were responsible for the ship's bad luck. Now, next time you want to sit in the pilot seat, look around for spirits, because this image was developed and it appears that somebody or something was in the helicopter with Miss Sayer the whole time. Number four, the Paris Demon. Originally, the tunnels under Paris were built for stone mines, but near the end of the 18th century, it turned into something haunting. Cemeteries were starting to fill up, and I mean that in a literal sense, and humans didn't figure out how to be clean, so bodies would just be laying on the sides of the roads. They started to pile up over time, so the solution was to use these catacombs. They were no longer needed for those mines anymore, so might as well use them as a mass graveyard. And now we have the scariest basement in the world. We have walls of skulls that, on one hand, it's cool as hell, it's natural history, it's gothic, yet beautiful, but when Google Maps tried to give a user an up-close look, it seemed to have caught a shadowy demon figure. With with more than 6 million souls laying down there, it doesn't shock me to hear about something like this at all. There's a video of the street view and in it you can see this figure. Check it out yourself. Number 3. Demons Are Us For this next one, we'll be going down the Lego aisle. Yeah, how fun. A haunted Toys R Us. Can you imagine all those toys starting up at night by themselves? Boom. Bay Area's haunted Toys R Us is no longer a thing. Thankfully, as of 2018, that location closed down, but its tales, they live on forever. The Sunnyvale Toys R Us demonic presence appeared in the background of this photo. But of course, like others on this list, the people present at the time of the photo swear that nobody else was there. It's like everyone has bad memory, everyone has good memory, I can't really tell right now. It's like, mm, could this be a spirit or a demon caught on tape that just happens to be at a Toys R Us? I vote yes. 
Employees talked about creepy things happening there at night all the time, and the Sunnyvale store is indeed haunted by more than one ghost. That's what people say. The store stood where the Murphy farm once stood, so many think the spirit is the ghost of Johnny Johnson. I don't know, the fact that Ouija boards are a toy, a toy that is commonly used to, I don't know, communicate with spirits, maybe closing these doors was the best call. I don't think we welcomed in any good spirits. I don't think any spirits are clocking in for work, you know what I mean? And now it's closed, so I'm like, it didn't work. Whatever we tried, didn't work. Number two, ghost boots. These boots are made for haunting, and that's just what they'll do. Yeah, I put a pair of boots on this list. That's where we're at now. This photo of a young girl may look like a classic family trip, but upon closer inspection, it seems like somebody or something is standing behind her. Now, of course, her father said that nobody was behind her at the time that it was taken, and I agree, that, and like, honestly, and I believe him. Honestly, that would be pretty weird if he was like, hey, can you stand right here? Yeah, are you behind my daughter? Don't move, but you stand right here in this open field. Thanks. ka -ching. I don't believe it. I don't buy it. It's weird. This shot was taken at Zushi Zenigawa, Japan, and you can see boots and what looks like clothing sticking out from behind the child's elbow. The kid's father said, I took a few photos, and when I was looking through them at night, I noticed the boots behind her. I took several photos in the same spot, but only one of them had boots. You always see that in movies, right? At night, they're going through, and they see like it's 2 a.m. It's never at a Walmart while it's being developed. They don't find these photos in a bright, busy area. It's always in like a dark kitchen. Ooh, it's creepy. So he freaked out, and then put it on Reddit, and then now we're here, full circle. And finally, coming in at number one, cave drawings. I know these aren't photos, but come on, there's nothing more eerie than humanity's origin, right? Let's do it, let's go back, let's turn the clocks back. And for archeologists from around the world, this cave system in France doubles as the world's oldest art gallery. These Paleolithic paintings are haunting to look at. They were created from humans about 20,000 years ago, and it's now considered a heritage site. There's many of these caves around the world. So if you're thinking about sneaking down there in the last caught caves and taking a look yourself, well, you better think again. The cave was opened originally in 1948, but due to carbon dioxide levels from visitors, it was closed in 1963. Learning about our history is challenging, and when it's slowly fading away, that surely doesn't help. Just gotta hold your breath while you read? This is crazy. I'm currently reading a book called Supernatural by Graham Hancock, and in it, he tries to dig through history to find the origins of spirituality, and markings in caves like these ones from ages ago definitely help. They resemble these demon-looking creatures almost, and this is long before religion. These drawings were supposedly from hallucinations, but many believe it's one of the first accounts of a demon interacting with a human. It's just drawn on a cave wall. Peck Merle is a cave in France that also has these strange drawings, and some say they resemble aliens, others, of course, voting demons. What do you guys think? This is from 25,000 years ago. Write all your thoughts and concerns down in the comments below. Showing off this countdown, we have the mysterious figure. Several years ago, this photo went viral on the internet. We still don't know who posted it, but soon it made its round on a number of platforms. The picture features an eerie looking figure standing in the forest alone. It's hard to tell if they're facing away or towards the camera, but they do appear to be dressed in a long nightgown or something like that. To this day, nobody knows what this figure is of. But a number of paranormal blogs believe that whatever it is captured in this photo is not human or living. And we still don't know who the original poster of this photo is. In our ninth spot today, we have the rake. The rake is this creepy humanoid creature with hollow black eyes and gaunt features. In 2003, a number of people in northeastern US reported sightings of this creature. The sightings were mainly from upstate New York. The scariest thing was shortly after there was a media blackout. Afterwards, no information on this creature was available. That was until 2006 when a group of internet sleuths decided to compile their own records of the rake. While doing so, they came across this ghostly image. In the image, we see a deer and a creepy figure in the back. They believe this to be the rake. If not, then it is Lord Voldemort from the first Harry Potter movie. Like, look at that face. Doesn't it look like when Voldemort was on the back of Professor Quirrell's head? Yes. Number eight, the SS Watertown. This picture here perhaps is one of the creepiest on this list. I'm not sure what to think of this one. It comes from 1924 and it shows what appears to be two older men or two older figures almost. I don't know, it's water, it's hard to tell. Some believe it's James Courtney and Michael Meehan in the water. Now the two had previously died and were buried at sea, hence that's why their first thought was them as to who it was. Other crew members saw these strange faces in the water as well. So when they turned back to get another look, five out of the six photos showed nothing. This was the only photo that showed what they saw. Are these the two lost crewmen or is the vessel haunted by sinister forces? In our seventh spot today, we have the Rake Part 2. Chances are, if you're into scary videos or urban legends, then you have at some point seen this creepy image on the internet. Well, guess what? I finally got down to the bottom of it and figured out where this image came from. 
So it was posted on a website's forum called Archery Talk. One of the users who goes by the name Hill Billy Willie posted this image saying his wildlife cam had captured it. It was posted on December 2nd of 2010. According to the guy, when he went to retrieve the camera, the ground directly in front of the tree was completely tore up. And the trail cam had been torn off the tree. The camera was laying face down about 10 feet in front of the tree that it was attached to. The tree also had some of its bark scratched off. When he checked his camera, he came across this photo. What do you think? A number of people believe that this is again photographic evidence of the rake. In our sixth spot today, we have the survivor. This trail cam snapped a photo of what looks to be just regular images of a forest in Finland. But something clearly triggered the camera to take this photo. So something was moving about there. So the anonymous person that owned the camera decided to analyze the photos more in depth. And that's when they discovered a human figure located to the far right of the frame in the photo. The figure appears very tall, skinny, and gaunt looking. It honestly took me a bit to see it. Now here's the creepy part. Apparently there had been a plane crash in the area previously. So could this be a survivor of the crash? Or the ghost of one of the victims? Who knows? We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the little girl. What the actual heck? Okay, is this little girl a deer whisperer? Or is she a lost child that has been raised by deers? We might never know. This is an image taken from the woods in Rowan, North Carolina. It was anonymously submitted to news station WBTV in 2017. The person said the news was allowed to make a story out of the image as long as his name was never shared. Immediately, it attracted a lot of attention. Some say it's a ghost of a girl that died in the area. Others say it's just a hoax. Either way, it's beyond creepy. Coming in at number four, we have the chupacabra. The chupacabra is a creature that likes to attack animals and drain them completely of their blood. They were first reported in 1995 in Puerto Rico when farmers found their goats, sheep, and other domestic animals uneaten but just drained of blood, as if they were attacked by a vampire. And this photo right here is believed to be evidence of a chupacabra. chupacabra Chupacabras have been described in a variety of ways, from a weird reptilian kangaroo with red eyes to a hairless canine. Some even say it has wings. Now let's take a look at this image again. What's weird is that both creatures in the photos look like two different versions of the chupacabra. The one on the left looks like a reptilian kangaroo, whereas the one on the right looks like it has horns and wings. Weird, isn't it? Maybe there are multiple breeds of chupacabras, which makes sense as to why there are different recorded descriptions of it. Now, if this isn't the legendary chupacabra, then what the heck is it? Coming into our third spot today, we have Oh Dear. Now, this is probably the darkest and scariest image on here out of all of them. Now, it is fairly graphic, so it will be censored, but alas, don't worry, I'm here to describe it to you. This image features a deer with another deer stuck to its antlers. One problem, that one deer is decapitated. He was literally traveling around with his dead friend stuck to the side of his head. It can't get more gruesome than that. How that happened in the first place? is beyond me. Moving on to number two, we have the bride to be. This eerie photo was taken by new landowners in upstate New York. They were going to use this property as a hunting area, so they set up a trail camera to make sure nobody else was also using this area to hunt. But they ended up capturing something out of their nightmares. Now legend goes that a 17 year old girl was killed in that area on her wedding night. So the couple believe that they captured a photo of this girl's ghost wandering around trying to get revenge on her killer. And in our number one spot today, we have the Bigfoot. This image was taken on September 16th of 2009 and features some sort of furry creature moving about. In one image, it looks as if the creature is praying or doing the downward dog position. In the other image, it's walking along on its all fours and kind of like a monkey. This photo was taken by hunter Rick Jacobs in Pennsylvania's Algany National Forest. According According to Jacobs, the camera was fastened to a 
tree about 150 miles northeast of Pittsburgh. He had hoped to get some photos of some deer, but he managed to capture what everyone thinks is Bigfoot. In fact, he even contacted the Bigfoot Research Organization, which I didn't know was real, but it is, and he submitted his findings to them. Group member Paul Mahita thinks that it is a photo of a young Sasquatch, whereas others believe that it is a diseased bear. Either way, it's kind of creepy, especially if it really is the Bigfoot. Mm -hmm.